Hi everyone, I'm joined today by Dr. Liam Irwin, an historian who is one of the best specialists of Patrick Sarsfield and the wild geese. Good morning, Liam. Good morning, Lloyd. Thank you very much for accepting to answer a few, a few questions on, on, on Patrick Sarsfield. To begin with, could you please tell us when and how did Patrick Sarsfield leave Ireland after the signing of, of the Treaty of Limerick? Um, immediately after the signing of the treaty until he left a few days before Christmas of 1691, Sarsfield was totally occupied with um, one task, that was ensuring that the Jacobite army were transported uh, safely to France, as had been the main guarantee, certainly as far as Sarsfield was concerned, uh, the most important element in the uh, Limerick itself. And this um, involved um, quite complicated logistics. Um, basically, the provision of transportation had been uh, guaranteed by Ginkel. And the um, main original, at any rate, um, way of doing that was utilizing English merchant ships that were then in uh, Cork. Um, so on the 16th of October, uh, Sarsfield left Limerick and uh, went to Cork, um, as did the majority of the Jacobite army. Uh, now, four days later, on the 20th of October, um, the long promised and delayed um, French fleet, which um, had been uh, promised and um, if it had arrived earlier, uh, would probably have meant that Sarsfield would not have surrendered. Um, that arrived uh, in the Shannon estuary. So it meant then that uh, about 6,000 of the um, Jacobite troops um, were taken to France um, in the French fleet. But it still meant that the uh, majority of the troops were in Cork and um, Sarsfield had quite a lot of difficulty to overcome um, in, in terms of uh, finalizing uh, the embarkation of the troops. Um, for example, um, the Williamite uh, commander in Cork, a man called Count Nassau, was a cousin of King William. Um, he um, tried to, in various ways, uh, frustrate Sarsfield's attempts uh, by uh, trying to encourage the Jacobite soldiers not to uh, go to France and by um, creating difficulties about the question of whether their wives and children could uh, accompany them or not. Uh, but uh, Ginkel overruled Nassau and um, eventually Sarsfield um, very um, successfully um, solved the problems and uh, succeeded in um, shipping all, all of the uh, groups who um, wanted to go. Now, some of them deserted in Cork, um, uh, but the majority did go. And on the 22nd of October, on the last ships, uh, Patrick Sarsfield sailed out of Cork, away from Ireland, as we know, never to return. Okay. And what were the last two years of his life like uh, in France then? Did he remain in France afterwards? He did. Uh, initially, uh, on his uh, arrival in France, uh, he liaised with the uh, French authorities uh, essentially trying to reorganize uh, the uh, Jacobite army and um, bring it into uh, French um, discipline, shall we say. Um, now, the, the army initially was considered to be the army of uh, James II, and he immediately made it clear that he wanted to use uh, the 14,000 or so Irish troops that were now at his disposal for an invasion of England. This, of course, suited Sarsfield and the Jacobites because, uh, as far as they were concerned, the Treaty of Limerick had not been 
the end of the game. Uh, it had actually been, shall we say, the half-time whistle and they intended to have a second half. And uh, now the opportunity was being uh, presented to them uh, uh, quite soon after their arrival in France. And Louis XIV had um, uh, agreed to uh, supply 7,000 French troops um, so it looked uh, as uh, throughout the um, spring of uh, winter and spring essentially of um, 1692 that um, um, the next phase of the war would be this invasion of England. Um, the uh, French Navy were uh, required uh, to transport the army uh, to England and so the troops uh, marched um, essentially to the coast, to the Cherbourg and La Hogue area, and uh, waited for the French ships. But the English Navy decided, rather than wait for an invasion, that they were going to take the offensive. And the result was a major naval battle between uh, the English Navy and the French, um, about 20 miles off the coast of La Hogue um, uh, in uh, May of 1692 and that proved disastrous uh, for uh, the Irish, uh, the uh, English Navy uh, had a uh, overwhelming uh, victory, uh, many of the French ships destroyed and essentially put an end to any hopes uh, of uh, an English invasion and after that the uh, Irish army, as we call them, uh, were uh, incorporated fully into the um, uh, French army and um, uh, organized uh, in, in uh, terms of, of brigades. Uh, now, th they remained together as uh, units, but uh, uh, under, un under French command. And uh, Sarsfield, interestingly, um, was um, given the French equivalent of Major General, but not in command of the Irish troops. Uh, the French had great regard um, for Sarsfield's ability, and uh, he was actually transferred to the um, personal um, command, really, of the great um, uh, French um, uh, commander, um, uh, Marshal Luxembourg. And um, really, for the rest of his in France. He served uh, under Luxembourg um, as a, a French major general, uh, taking part in um, um, major battles. Um, the background to all of this, of course, is uh, uh, France continually at war with um, uh, various uh, European um, uh, foes, this War of the Grand Alliance, as it was um, uh, called. Um, at the uh, uh, important battle of Steenkirk in uh, August of 1692, uh, Luxembourg reported back to Louis XIV, uh, giving uh, high praise to Sarsfield uh, for his role in the battle and uh, saying what a fine um, officer he was. Mm -hmm. um, then um, after the summer campaign, um, which was really in, in the Flanders area, uh, armies of, uh, of course didn't fight during the uh, autumn and winter, so uh, Sarsfield would have gone, did go to the um, court in exile in saint germain uh, of of uh, James II, where his uh, family were, uh, his wife, Honora, whom he had uh, married uh, in during the war in Ireland in, in January of 1690. Uh, his mother was there, his two uh, sisters, um, and uh, they, they, they all were um, a prominent part, really, of uh, the court there. And uh, Sarsfield's wife, in particular, uh, charmed everybody, including, uh, though a mean achievement, uh, the court of Louis XIV um, uh, himself. And, and we have... Um, various accounts uh, uh, of that. Um, and uh, to um, round off, as it were, uh, that family time, uh, early in April of 1693, 
uh, Sarsfield's uh, first and only child was born uh, out in Paris. Um, uh, as son. Uh, but uh, within a month, he was back uh, in Flanders, uh, continuing his military career. And that, of course, uh, culminated uh, in the uh, famous uh, Battle of Landen, uh, or near Winden, probably more accurate for it, uh, on the 29th of July, uh, where Sarsfield received what was to be uh, a fatal wound. Mm -hmm. Do we know uh, how he died and where he is buried? Uh, not definitively, shall we say. Uh, he didn't die on the battlefield. He was wounded in the chest and uh, was taken about 20 miles away to the uh, town of Huy, um, which had been captured by the French um, uh, about a week earlier. Uh, he was treated for his wound in um, uh, an abbey uh, in the town, but within uh, about three days, he had um, uh, died, uh, either from the wound itself or possibly from uh, infection. Um, we uh, don't know definitely uh, where he was buried, but it is uh, pretty certain uh, it would have been in the uh, churchyard attached to the local uh, church in the town. Uh, we do know from local records there that uh, five other uh, French officers uh, died um, uh, around the same time. So presumably, the, uh, Sarsville would have been buried uh, alongside uh, those other uh, uh, French officers. Uh, it's sometimes said he was buried in the church. Uh, I think that is uh, unlikely. I think it would have been uh, in, in the uh, church, surrounding the church. Um, so the um, general area, shall we say, uh, where Sarsfield was buried um, uh, is fairly uh, reliably uh, known, but uh, there is no indication whatever of where the uh, individual uh, grave of Sarsfield uh, was or is. Mm, I think. Thank you so much again for your, your, your time, Liam. It was a, a very interesting chat. Uh, we couldn't have dreamed of asking a better expert uh, on Southfield. So thank you again and, and bye and bye everyone.